Thanks a lot uh, for that, Prashant. Well, let's move on then uh, to discuss the consumption space now and the trends that are seen in the e-commerce and quick service. Well, we're joined by Abhinish Roy, Executive Director at Novoma Institutional Equities, who joins in. Um, hi, Abhinish. Morning. Always good hearing your thoughts. Uh, Abhinish, I wanted to ask you, you know, this uh, entire push online, are you seeing it more in only urban cities or do you believe that, in fact, you know, you're seeing that even uh, percolate down to Tier 2, Tier 3 as well? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Nigel. Uh, so definitely e-commerce has uh, definitely picked up even in the rural areas, thanks to uh, geo, thanks to the overall rates coming down past few years. So uh, across the companies, we do see that uh, not just urban India, even the midtown and the smaller cities have uh, caught up. And even in the rural areas, we are seeing increasing signs of that. Uh, having said that, uh, now with uh, life coming back fully to normal, uh, to pre-COVID, we are also seeing... Uh, the physical part of uh, the buying coming back fully. So uh, I think both will coexist. Uh, we also need to see how the uh, D2C startups, uh, how they fare. Clearly, liquidity has dried up. Uh, we are seeing a lot of m and Unilever, for example, acquired uh, two D2C companies uh, just two weeks back. So that trend is also there that uh, all these e-commerce players, D2C startups, which do not have a proper funding, I think there is a challenge there. So my sense is long term, both will coexist, but uh, near term physical retailing is also coming back uh, strongly. Any indications of how this uh, November, December, actually October, right? The demand has been for the FMCG companies. Where is it that we've seen a lot of traction? What are your channel checks suggesting by way of trends? Yeah, in the FMCG now, from a rural uh, uh, yardstick, there is some... Uh, base effect which is helping but uh, structurally i think rural demand still remains quite challenging uh, unless the rural uh, consumer sees deflation in terms of his uh, consumption say diesel fertilizer general inflation further i think till then uh, rural recovery is still awaited but yes because of base effect uh, benefit uh, the rural uh, slowdown is uh, definitely tapering down just to give you some numbers earlier as per nielsen uh, the rural volumes were declining almost high single digit. Now I think it has come down to more like uh, mid single digit, but still currently urban demand is growing faster. In terms of categories, I would say that definitely uh, biscuits, noodles are still growing faster than many of the other segments, but that's because of down trading and definitely the market share gains are happening. So we would expect uh, Hindustan, Unilever, Britannia, Nestle to outperform most other staple companies in Q3 and Q4 both. Q3, the margin recovery will be gradual. The real margin. Oopsie. Okay, we've uh, snapped uh, that uh, connection, but he was in. We've managed to reconnect with Abnish. Abnish, go ahead. You were telling us about uh, how rural is seeing, seeing a slow slowdown now. The decline has just been in mid single digits versus double digit uh, earlier. Right, you're absolutely right. So uh, we expect uh, Hindustan, Unilever, Nestle and Britannia to outperform most of the other staples uh, because uh, biscuits and noodles are growing faster. In terms of margins, we expect recovery in Q4, uh, the bigger recovery because of the lag effect. Q3, there will be some expansion of margins versus the first half. But in terms of the YOI, I think the real improvement will start from Q4. And rural recovery, my sense is also will start more from Q4, somewhere in Q4. In Q3, rural structural recovery for FMCG has still not happened. All right, uh, Abnesh, uh, you know, one stock that's going to be in focus is Dabur. And that's opened with a cut of around 2.5%. Uh, the promoter is selling a small stake out there. What's your current rating on the stock? And if you could tell us, how are you viewing this development? Yeah, I think uh, this development, which uh, I think has uh, come yesterday, uh, this is very rare, right? In FMCG, promoter stake sale is very rare. Uh, of course, uh, investors uh, will not necessarily see this as a very positive, so they will await clarification whether this is a one-time. Yes, uh, promoter stake in Dabar is quite high at 67%. Out of that, if they are selling 0.8, uh, still it's a very high uh, promoter stake. Uh, but uh, is it one-time? Second is, uh, as I said, because the rural uh, demand still recovery is awaited, and winter also has not really met uh, full expectation in terms of uh, the initial euphoria that it's going to be a strong winter. Dabur will be slightly uh, middling in terms of our pecking order. So we have a buy. 
it's it's a great play on the rural recovery in FY24. And now the immunity part of the portfolio, which was a challenge, I think that has uh, gone away. But investors would uh, uh, have some questions on why this promoter stakes sale because in terms of dividend, if you see, Dabur has around 50% dividend payout. They pay around 600, 700 crores uh, dividend to the promoters. So why uh, further... Okay, uh, we'll try and reconnect later. But Abneesh, thank you very much.